Hello, I'm the 10 Minute English Teacher. Let's get you exam ready. Today we're thinking about Lord of the Flies and we're going to be looking at chapter 2 and 3. Okay, so here's the action from chapter 2. You might want to take a moment to see if you can recall the key events in that chapter. This is what we'll be exploring today and you're going to find out exactly what happens in chapter 2 and then chapter 3. Okay, chapter two. Ralph calls an assembly using the conch and he suggests uh, that whoever's got the conch in their hands is given the power to talk. How democratic. Jack thinks about punishing rule breakers. Ralph says this is a good island which is in conflict with the earlier descriptions of the island. He is idealistic and is giving the boys false hope. A little boy with a mulberry birthmark wants to speak, but shyly whispers his contribution to Piggy. He thinks he's seen a beast in the night. There's much debate and fear. Ralph is dismissive and Jack talks of protecting the group. Ralph suggests the boys build a signal fire for passing ships to sea and tries to unite the group to work towards rescue. Ralph mentions it could be even, sorry, Ralph says it could even be daddy's ship that comes along, which is a bit infantile and naive. The way that he speaks about his father makes us think that he's a little bit idealistic and a little bit immature here and it sort of foreshadows his failing as a leader. All of the boys, with the exception of Piggy, follow Jack up the mountain to make the fire. Piggy and Ralph watch the boys run off up the mountain in frustration. To make the fire, Ralph and Piggy then rejoin the group and everyone makes a wild and dangerous fire using Piggy's specs, ignoring Piggy's good advice as they do, which is um, quite a theme in the novel. The fire gets out of control and sets light a patch of nearby trees. The chapter ends with everyone realising that the boy with the mulberry birthmark, the one who spoke of there being a beastie in the night, um, they realise he's missing. And the boys realise that he's died in the trees and the fire has spread and caught him. But this is never spoken of or acknowledged openly in the novel. It's hard to admit your failings or humanity's capacity for evil if you want to get symbolic. And here are the quotes um, to know for this chapter. This is a good island, is said by Ralph, and it's it really does sum him up. He's naive, he overlooks the danger that they're in and the, the evil in himself and others. Ralph, um, Jack, sorry, says lots of rules Then when anyone breaks them. So he's got this sort of threatening tone there and that foreshadows him. Um, becoming quite a ruthless leader should he get the chance to as he will do later in the novel jack also says we're the english and the english are best at everything so he's quite patriotic and expects to be successful and simply because of his his nationality and that patriotism that he displays there is ironic you know this was written just after world war ii when when britain had been involved in in defeating the nazis and I think Golding could be making a wider statement about humanity and human nature here. It's, it's, it's some, the evil that is something that is apparent in these characters is something that I think he wants us to understand is apparent in all of us. And, and it's ironic that Jack is patriotic and nationalistic because he's ultimately a, a cruel and a character who is descending into madness. Um, Ralph talks about Daddy's ship that infantilises him and Piggy says, acting like a crowd of kids um, when they head off up the mountain. So those are the quotes that we should know for chapter two and you've got the flashcard of the key moments of action um, to use as well for your reference. Then we move on to chapter three. So these are the key moments in chapter three and we'll move through them now. The chapter opens with a focus on Jack. He's following the tracks of a pig and is described by Golding to be dog-like and ape-like. Um, really lovely because not only are they similes, they are zoomorphic. So you can sound really clever in the exam talking about these zoomorphic similes. And ultimately they're telling us that that humanity and the good in Jack is, is disappearing. Hunting is described to be maddening and he fails in his hunt this time and returns to Ralph who is building shelters. Then Ralph and Jack argue. Um, which is going to be something that will be ongoing throughout the novel. Ralph is interested in shelters and rescue, and Jack is now obsessed with killing and meat. So we've got this opposition of savagery versus civilization that's very apparent in their exchange. Simon, in this moment, pops up and says that it might not be a good island, and um, that's quite philosophical and, and, and interesting, and it sort of puts a little bit of emphasis on Simon and makes us realise that he's... Um, there's more to him than simply being a shy boy that faints at the beginning of the novel. 
Then the two boys face each other and Ralph looks away first. He'll do this repeatedly in the novel. It's something that's easy to overlook, but whenever the two boys face off, it's always Ralph that looks away first. That does happen a few times. The arguing and disagreement between Ralph and Jack continues and they go their separate ways. Ralph to focus on shelter building in frustration because everyone else is off either playing or in Jack's case hunting. And Jack disappears as night is falling to, to try and hunt one more time. This foreshadows a later schism, which sounds clever and just means big time fallout. Then we have the end of the chapter and the focus here is on Simon to let us know there's more to this quiet and careful boy. Simon goes off into the jungle alone and is bathed in images of sunlight and the scent of flowers. This chapter ends with a positive tone, unlike the previous two. So we've now got quite a nice sort of positive moment with Simon exploring the island The first chapter ends with Jack almost killing a pig and Golding says next time there'll be no mercy, which is quite foreboding. The second chapter ends with the death of the boy with the mulberry birthmark, which makes the situation seem quite stark and it's a really dark ending to that chapter. This chapter ends with a positive tone, with this positive imagery and and Simon exploring the island. So perhaps there is hope and if there is, it has something to do with Simon. It's not a huge um, chapter for quotes that are worth really knowing confidently for the exam but there are a couple here that you can take away and learn in order to be able to explore some of the characters and themes so Jack is dog-like and ape-like Ralph looked away first although you could just simply explore that in your own words it's a method that's used by by Golding Jack says I thought I might kill and there's a bit of emphasis placed on kill by the use of Golding's dash there for that extended pause Um, to allude perhaps to murder and Simon philosophically says as if this wasn't a good island which sort of makes us realise that there's more to him. Okay check out the other videos on my channel I'll continue to add content and feel free to ask for something you'd like to see me cover in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe ring the bell and share with your friends and keep revising.